Have you ever thought about what's the difference between the internet and the World Wide Web? Is there a difference? Hello world, Prof Mike Green here. Talking about the difference between the internet and the World Wide Web, and yes, there is a difference. Uh, in today's world, maybe it's all ubiquitous and we don't experience the difference, but on a technical level, these are two different systems that we use together. The internet, uh, as if you haven't watched some of these other great videos, uh, which do a great job of explaining what computer networks are and how the internet is an interconnected set of networks all over the world. There are some major concepts that, uh, you know, these are the take homes, right? First off, who should we blame? Vint Cerf and Bob Kahn are uh, granted title of fathers of the internet. There were many engineers and scientists that helped build the internet and the networks and, and turn it into what we use today. Uh, these two gentlemen worked on the protocols and standards, right, creating one way that all these things talk to one another. And that was the key that really made it um, work, right? If we'd had separate networks that talked in a different language, uh, it would be like the human society. We all, we all speak a different language and we're not necessarily one humanity all the time. But the internet uses the same language to talk to one another, TCP IP, and in, in that sense is much more powerful because worldwide it knows how to talk to one another. So the fact that the internet is standardized and uses these protocols is a, is a key component. Packet switching, the idea that we take a bit of information, uh, like a web page, like a YouTube video, whatever, we break it apart in slices right we send those small pieces over the wires over the internet and then on the other end they get put back together that's packet switching um, that was a key technology that enabled the internet to become faster and faster and faster what they found early on was even though there was just static web pages small small files there were no images there was no I mean it was email it was it was nothing like the web and the the content that we experience over the internet today. Stuff was much smaller, but they found out that the pipes were getting clogged. This was before even dial-up modems. I mean, this stuff was so slow back in the 70s and the 80s that even sending an email all at once was too slow. So they developed this packet switching technology uh, that we still use today, and it's how we deliver these huge files over the internet, and we're able to do that without clogging up the lines. Uh, decentralization and nodes, the concept that this is not a, a point to point, right? There are not, there's not one central internet server in the world that if that went down, bye bye internet. The internet is like a spider web. It's decentralized. You can, uh, if some node goes down, each node would be, you know, a major server on the internet. Uh, we, if one of those goes down, uh, we just find another one. We just reroute. Uh, another way. That's why sometimes you might you might try to get uh, from your house to the RCC website and you might go all over the world and eventually come back to our website. You don't necessarily go from Matthews to campus. You, you go all over the place because it actually finds the shortest route and that's shortest by time not by distance. And the, the final concept of using the internet is this idea of client-server computing, where uh, you know my computer here is uh, is a client, and I want to access something over the internet, and uh, I go through the network to a server which hosts that, which provides it to different clients, and then it sends it back to me. So there's a, there's two parties in this system: a client and a server. And those are the major components that, for our purposes in this course, that you need to understand about computer networks and the internet. So what about the World Wide Web? What is that? Well, again, who can we blame? We can blame uh, Sir Tim Berners-Lee. He was the physicist that um, wrote the program, really, that, that is the World Wide Web, at least was the first version of the World Wide Web. And, and he, um, 
he has maintained uh, his involvement in, in keeping it and moving it forward throughout the last, um, I guess, 25 plus years. So the World Wide Web runs on top of the internet. It requires that network. It's a program that allows us to access and view content. Um, so without the internet, the web is, is nothing. We could only have whatever web content we have stored on our local computer, which isn't much. Um, the hypertext standard. So again, this concept of standards that the same standard is used worldwide, right? We have HTML, hypertext markup language, is the basis of all the web pages out there on the web. And the fact that this is a, a, a single standard and it's an open standard. Um, Tim Berners-Lee could have said, you know, pay me a penny for every web page you want to make or every time you want to access one. He could have created a proprietary system that he would have become filthy rich off of. Uh, he decided to take the other stance, to make this completely free, to make it open, to make it available for everyone because he understood what kind of potential uh, this could have for world good. And the fact that it has been an open standard is why the World Wide Web has taken off and has become such a worldwide phenomenon. And the, the last bit here, he created a system that was easy for non-geeks, for muggles. You didn't have to be an engineer to use the web. Maybe you had to learn some code if you wanted to create the content, but if you were an end user that wanted to just browse what was out there, it was a simple user interface and that was key to, to adoption. Right? If this had been something that was difficult to use, normal people wouldn't have picked it up. So the internet in the World Wide Web, yes, there's something that we use together, but they are technically two different systems. That's it for this video on the Internet versus the World Wide Web. Uh, I'm Prof. Mike Green, and thanks for watching.